Hey gamers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and today I'm going to be reviewing Cellulose from Genius Games. This is a worker placement game that is scientifically based and in which you are trying to grow a plant. All right, so here is a game of cellulose that's all set up for a solo game. In a game of cellulose, the idea is that you are contributing to the growth of a plant and to its health, but you're competing to get the most points because you want to be the one who contributed the most to the health of the plant. This larger board represents what's happening inside a plant cell. And then this board represents what's happening in the plant at large. And each player is going to be able to choose a growth pathway along the plant. So you can grow it along whichever track you want to. And then you can also put down roots in the same manner. For this overview, I'm going to give you a sense of turn structure and then talk about the solo mode and the basics of how that works. Each round of the game is based in the course of a day. So you begin with the sunrise phase. Sunrise is a short and sweet phase where you collect income. So for right now, my markers are on zero water because my roots aren't very deep and I'm gonna get one carbon dioxide. As I progress down into the earth with my roots and up into the air with my shoots, I'm gonna collect better and better rewards at each sunrise phase. One thing that's quite interesting about this game is that there are strategic choices to how you choose to grow your roots and your shoots once you go along a pathway, you can't actually backtrack. So you can essentially choose to take a pretty good reward very quickly, or you can take a longer time to grow your plants, but get better returns per turn. So depending on the kind of strategy you're going for and what resources you think you're gonna need, you wanna plan how you grow your plant in order to get the best sunrise bonuses every turn. After that, you get to the main phase, which is daytime, and this is when you take your actions. In a two-player game, each player is going to have their three flasks of their color, because we're scientists, and a gray one. So in this solo setup, I have three of my color and a gray, and then Ivy, the AI opponent, also has the same setup. And like in any worker placement game, you're going to take turns placing flasks out on the board in different areas where you want to take an action. So let's take a tour of the board to see what kind of actions you can take. I'm going to start by talking about the cell wall. One of the actions that you're able to take is placing a carbohydrate in the cell wall to grow it. Basically, the idea is that our cell wall is getting stronger and sturdier the more carbohydrates we place along here. You also get some pretty nice points for doing so, especially early in the game. However, the cell wall is also automatically going to advance in the evening phase of the turn. And once this last space on the cell wall is covered, that's what triggers your end game. There's a lot of points to be had here, and there's a lot of reasons to work on the cell wall. But at the same time, if you don't want the game to end too fast, you don't want to do it too hard. This one up here, Xylem, allows you to absorb water. So basically what will happen with Xylem is you place your flask, you take five water, and then you lower the amount of water available for the next person to take that action. There's only so much water available per day, and then it'll reset for the next day. When you take water using a Xylem action, you also have the option to add some of it to your central vacuole. You can add up to three water that you've gained this way, and it gives you points, but also whoever holds the majority in the central vacuole at the end of your day is going to get an extra gray flask for the next round. So depending on how much that means to you versus other things you might need the water for, you may choose to add water to the central vacuole to score some points and get a turn advantage the next day. This next action is absorb CO2. This one actually has two spaces, which is a good illustration for what you can do with the flasks. This is a small space, which means that only one flask can go here. This is a limited space. So essentially when you take the stomata action, the first person to do it in place of flask here gets six CO2. Everybody else who takes the action on turn will get four. Once you've got a good amount of water and CO2, you can come here to the chloroplast action. And this allows you to create some carbohydrates, which as you might recall, you needed to build the cell wall in addition to some other things on the boards. As with the stomata action, there are two spaces here. The first person to take this action can make two carbohydrates if they are able, and then the other players can only make one if they choose to come here. So you pay six water and six CO2 to get a carb. The cell wall action, as we've already discussed, allows you to build up the cell wall, take some points, and add a little bit of water to the central vacuole. So if you're going for that majority at the end of the turn, it's a good action. Here we have mitochondria, and that allows you to trade a carbohydrate for either six or five ATP, depending on whether you're the first or the second person to take the action. ATP is basically energy in a cell, and you're gonna need it to power some of your plant growth and possibly some of your cards, which could have energy costs. 
your ribosomes are gonna let you collect some proteins. So you're either gonna come and get five if you're the first or three if you come later. The cytoplasm lets you collect plant hormones, which you need to power your plant's growth. It's some part of the cost of growing your roots or your shoots. And then there's also a separate plant growth action. And depending on how focused you are in your turn and who else is taking actions, these spaces are free and let you choose either your shoots or your roots, or you can pay one protein to come here and pick which one, but you can't do both. Essentially, this game is learning how to efficiently collect resources, convert them into other resources, and use them at the right times to power further benefits. So water and CO2 and protein are some of your basic resources that you need to get carbohydrates. You need your proteins to power a lot of your cards, and you also may need them to grow your plant. You'll notice also that there are costs to growing your roots and your shoots, and you're going to need things like hormones and carbohydrates and ATP in order to power that growth. So you need to be collecting resources with an eye to whatever it is you want to do next. Which leads us to the last couple of actions that are on the board. One is just the nucleus. You can go here to take the first player marker and draw a card. And then there is the all important card purchasing action. The leftmost card in the market will be free. And then there are little CO2 costs for each of the remaining ones. But these costs are just to add a card to your hand. To play a card from your hand, you need to be able to pay the cost on the left with the red number. And you're paying that for the benefit at the bottom of the card. So in this case, starch lets you draw a bunch of cards, discard some, and then you get a whole bunch of points. While most of the cards just have an immediate benefit, there are also cards that allow you to get the immediate benefit in this lighter khaki color, and then build an enzyme chain that allows you to pay a protein to trigger this special bonus action every time you add to that enzyme chain, which I think is a pretty neat effect. So get base resources, convert them to better resources, get cards that are gonna help you, grow your plants strategically, and do all of that in the service of getting the most points, and you'll be winning the game by the time you get to the last part of the cell wall. After you've done all of your actions, you're gonna have an evening phase, and during that phase, you take all your action markers back, you do your central vacuole majority award, so whoever's got the majority will get that extra flask for their turn. Automatically add one carbohydrate to the cell wall, because you can't just sit there and not build it forever, it will automatically build itself to an extent. You gotta reset your water level, and that is based on what level your cell wall is at, so one will go here, two goes up to six, and then three takes you to eight. And then you refresh your cell component cards market a bit by taking the leftmost cards away, sliding these down, and drawing new ones from the deck. And that's a basic overview of how to play. Now, let's talk about solo mode. In a solo mode of this game, you're going to play against an automated opponent whose name is Ivy. She does not play in the same plant board as you. This is her plant that she's going to grow and develop throughout the game. So her plant growth marker is here. She's an ivy, she just grows up the ivy. This is the easy side, but there's actually a medium hard side so you can flip the solo board for ivy and play a more difficult mode. Ivy will essentially always block off the best spaces on the board and she's always gonna get more resources than you. For example, she always gets six water and always gets six CO2, no matter what the actual space says when she plays her flask there. So you'll just have to get used to ivy cheating to be better than you. However, Ivy does not collect all resources. She only takes water, CO2, and carbohydrates. Everything else is essentially your province. Ivy will also collect cards. And once you reach level two on the cell wall, there will be instructions for how she can play them. As Ivy's plant grows, she gets income just like you would. And what's really interesting about this particular solo mode is that the solo opponent will take on a different strategy depending on how things work out in the game. So for example, whenever Ivy places water in the central vacuole, her marker will move towards the central vacuole strategy. If Ivy gains an enzyme card, she's gonna move down towards the enzyme strategy. And she may kind of move around in the middle a little bit until eventually she will hit one of the edges and then she locks here and gets a specialization card that gives her an extra good card that's gonna come up on her turns it's possible for her to eventually end up with two of her specialization strategy cards because she'll end up in a corner where she can collect from this side and this side, or likewise for any of the other corners. What Ivy actually does during her action phase is determined by these cards. So every time you draw one, you go down until you find something that Ivy can do, you place her flask accordingly, and you do it. So for example, on this card, 
we know that we're only gonna take this action if Ivy has fewer than four cards in her hand. But if that's the case, she's gonna take a cell component card and she's gonna prioritize based on the colors that are here. This one will be if she doesn't have first player, she'll go for it. And then in this action, she'll place two action markers simultaneously, one on a hormone space and then one on a growth space. And then that will allow her to grow her plant. So essentially you're never quite sure what Ivy's going to be doing, but it's all driven by her cards. This is a level one card because there's one line in the bottom right corner. Once you hit the second part of the cell wall, you add level two cards to her deck. And then when she fully chooses a strategy, you add strategy cards to Ivy's deck. So you're gonna have a slightly different experience with her every time you play, and she will automatically choose different strategies against you, which gives you a little bit of a chance to anticipate what she might do. And you'll get to test yourself out against different types of strategies because Ivy will choose different strategies each time. And that's a quick overview of Cellulose and its solo mode with Ivy. All right, so now for some final thoughts. I'm gonna to try to approach this from two angles. The first is the gameplay, and the second is its educational value. Genius Games sells cellulose and other science-based games in this line as educational games that are meant to teach while also being fun. I think the best way to sum up the gameplay for cellulose is that it is a very simple worker placement game that does its job well. If you are looking for something that is relatively light, if you like the theme, if you want something that's relatively simple to teach people who are not hardcore gamers the way probably most of the people in this audience are, then I think that Cellulose does a good job. It's got all the basic resource conversion aspects that you would expect from a worker placement game, and then a few elements that are really fun. I liked that you could make some different choices about how to grow your plants, its roots and shoots, in terms of the rewards that you've got and how quickly those rewards maxed out. And I really, really liked the enzyme chaining in the card play. I thought it was really cool that if you had enough proteins, then you could play an enzyme card and then activate other bonus actions down your enzyme chain. I also did think that the solo mode was well implemented. Ivy is a fun opponent to play. She's easy to manage. And I liked that they tried to build in ways to give her different strategies because a lot of times an AI becomes predictable because it will do roughly the same things every time. Adding a little bit of spice in there for Ivy was a cool choice. That said, if you're looking for a game that's really crunchy, if you're looking for a game that you're gonna play again and again and again, I'm not convinced that Cellulose is it. As worker placement games go, this one is very workman-like. If you're looking for something that really feels different because you've already played a bunch of worker placement games and you just want a science one, then I don't know if Cellulose is gonna satisfy you. But if you're looking for a simple worker placement game with a theme that you like, and this one's it for you, and you want a basic solo mode to allow you to play it, then I think that Cellulose will be a good choice. Educationally speaking, whew, I'm really not sure how I, I would assess this. I'm not a science teacher, I am a Latin teacher, but I will say that I don't feel that I really learned anything about plant cells from playing this game. I was able to connect some of the terms to things that I'd learned in AP Biology back in high school. And it was nice to see some of the concepts come to life. So I definitely got the concept of a stronger cell wall making a plant able to hold more water. And I liked the need for growth hormones to make the plant grow, but I'm not sure that I really learned anything else new. Most of it was just recall of knowledge that I acquired at earlier points in my life. So if you're planning to get this game for homeschool purposes to, you know, help your kids learn how a plant cell works, or if you're a science teacher and you wanted to have a station where the students played this game and, you know, they were going to learn about the plant cell from that, I can see this being good vocabulary reinforcement, maybe learning the vocabulary and some of the functions of the cell in the context of a game would be good but you're going to have to pair it with the science behind the game pamphlet that comes in the box or with some other kind of background knowledge that the game will activate for you. You definitely are not going to learn that much about plant cell biology just from playing, learning the rules and playing. It's absolutely possible to play this game and learn absolutely nothing about plants because it's just a functional work replacement game. So if you're going to use it as an educational tool, I can see it being good reinforcement, I don't see it being a good tool for learning something for the first time or even the second. So think about how you want to use it before you pick this game up for those purposes. That said, Cellulose is a fun game. If somebody was at game night and they wanted to play it, I would play it with them. I don't know that it's one for the ages. It doesn't quite align with my chunkier tastes in worker placement games. But if you're looking for a simple, sciencey worker placement, 
and maybe one that's going to reinforce some concepts that you want to learn more about or that you want your family to learn more about, I can see this being a solid choice for game night. So that's Cellulose from Genius Games. Thanks so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, and most of all, happy gaming.